In this video, we're going to discuss uh, the concept of the delta of an option. So if you go all the way back to the beginning, we looked at a one-step binomial tree. And we looked at this portfolio, which was short an option, long some shares, which had long delta shares. And we found that by choosing delta sensibly, we could remove the risk, or at least the risk that the share price moves from our option position or from our portfolio, and thus we could figure out what our options were. <clears throat> now, I'm setting up here in this picture a very generic case. So the stock starts at some price S, it can go up to S sub U, or it can go down to S sub D, and that's over some time delta T. And we've got some option. We know its value at time delta T or T plus delta T in the future. And we call the value of the stock goes up D sub U and the value of the stock goes down D sub D. We've calculated these probabilities and we have a formula which tells us what D is. Um, if this is a European option, then D equals probability up times D sub U plus one minus the probability times D sub D, that whole quantity times D to the minus R delta T. And that's our value for D. Now, there's a key quantity which we should remember, which is this delta. And we can write delta as D sub U minus D sub D, the value of the derivative if, it, if the stock goes up, minus the value of the derivative if the stock goes down, divided by S sub U minus S sub D, the value of the stock if it goes up, minus the value of the stock if it goes down. Now, if you were thinking about the mathematics of this, you'll see that's actually a slope, rise over run. And one way to think about this delta is the delta is the number of shares that the option behaves like. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to look now at a two-step binomial tree. I've already done all the work. So we price a three-month European call option with strike of 50 on a two-step binomial tree where the non-dividend paying stock is trading at 52. The volatility of the stock is 20%. Continuously compounded interest rates are 5%. So we go and we calculate U and D. U equals E to the volatility, E to the sigma, delta T. This is a three month option. So each time step is 0.125 years. And D is one over U. We build the tree of stock prices on the left. We then can evaluate the option prices on the right. The strike is 50. This is a call. So the first price there, that $9.90, is the stock ends up at 59.9. .9. We exercise the option. It's worth 9.90 and so on. We calculate P. We can calculate 6.12 and 3.70 and so on. This is just a standard pricing. Now, here is where the delta comes in. So we're gonna use delta equals D sub U minus D sub D over S sub U minus S sub D. We can create a tree of option deltas. So we take the option prices on the right, the stock prices on the left, and we do this calculation. We can do it in three places. And we get a delta of 68.95 at the beginning, the first node of our tree, 100% if the stock goes up, and 29.16% if the stock goes down. And we can interpret this that the option right now behaves as, as if it's 0.6895 of a share. If the stock goes up, it's going to behave as if it's one share. And if the stock goes down, it's going to behave as if it's 0.2916 of a share. Now we can think about the dealer strategy. The dealer is going to buy a call today. He's going to pay 370, that's the option price. The delta is 0 0.6895, 68.95%. So he hedges by shorting 0.6895 shares. When he shorts those shares, he receives $35.86 in cash. That's 52 times 0 0.6895. He has to invest $32.16. That's the money he received from selling the shares minus the 370 he paid for the option. So he invests at the risk-free rate of 5% for 0.125 years. 
Now we wait. We wait and see what happens. The stock might go up, the stock might go down. We don't know which. Right now we have a portfolio worth nothing. So let's assume the stock increases to 55.81, namely the stock went up from 52. So this is our situation. The option is worth 6.12. The delta is now 100%, and the stock's at 55.81. So the shares that we shorted are now worth negative 38.48. The investment is worth 32.36, which is 32.16, times E to the RT, because the investment was 5% for 0.125 years. Our portfolio is worth zero, but now we've got the wrong number of shares. So we need to short an additional 0.3105 shares to end up with a delta of minus one share. We're gonna receive $17.33 in cash. So we add that to our investment and we have $49.69 in cash to invest at 5% for 0.125 years. Now, again, there are two possibilities. The stock can either finish at 59.9 or 52. We are long a call option. So the investment is worth $50, 49.69, e to the 0 0.05 e times 0.125. We're going to exercise our option in either situation. We're gonna pay $50 and receive one share. Well, luckily our investment was worth $50. So we receive our share and we close out our short position. We have no cash and no shares. So basically the stock started at 52. We don't didn't start by assuming one thing happened or another, but if the stock did go to 5581, we changed our position, rebalanced our delta hedge, and waited again. And then in this case, it didn't matter whether the stock ended at 59.9 or 52. In both cases, we ended up with exactly the right amount of money. So we could exercise the option, close out a short position, we have no cash and no shares. All right, let's look at the other scenario. Stock started at 52 and it went down to 48.45. The option price fell and the delta changed. It actually got smaller. So the option's worth $1.05. The shares are worth negative 33.41. The investment, again, grew to 32.36. Our portfolio is worthless. So basically, we set up our st strategy and we don't care what happened for that first step. Now we've got the wrong number of shares. We have to buy back 0.3979 shares for $19.28. And we have $13.08 to invest at 5% for 0.125 years. Now there are two possibilities. Stock goes to 52. The investment's worth 13.17. We exercise the option, pay 50, receive a share. We were short 0.2916 shares. So we close out the short and sell the remaining 0.7084 shares for 36.83. The cash nets to zero, right? We sold the shares for 36.83. We had an investment worth 13.17. So that's $50 in cash, which we paid to exercise the option. Let's look if the stock goes down, right? Stocks was at 48.45, goes down to 45.14. The option's worthless. The investment's worth $13.17. The option's out of the money, so we don't exercise it. We buy 0.2916 shares. That's how many shares we have. How much do they cost? $13.17. We close out a short. We have no cash and no shares. Now, what's really happened on all of this is that we started at 52. If we go all the way back to the beginning, we started at 52. We put on the off. We, created a portfolio, which was short 0.6895 shares. We had some cash left over. We invested that for an eighth of a year, and then we waited. And we waited for the eighth of a year to pass. And because we knew the stock was going to 5581 or 4845, we didn't care what happened. We got to one of those two points. We rebalanced our delta hedge. And then again, we didn't care what happened. Imagine we were a dealer. If we were a dealer, we would pay a little bit less for this call. We wouldn't pay 370, we might pay 360. We would, through this strategy, just like we did on the one-step tree, through this strategy, the 10 cents that I just 
we just made by buying a call a little bit too cheaply, we followed the strategy. At the end, we would have had the 10 cents grown at 5% for a quarter of a year. So it works out exactly as it did for a one-step tree. Now, we also learned how to build a four-step tree or an eight-step tree or a thousand-step tree. As long as we are rebalancing this delta hedge every step through the tree, we will always end up neither making nor losing money if we bought the option at fair value. The same is true if we sold the option at fair value, we've just got to do the opposite strategy with our deltas, right? This delta, if we sold this option, the delta is 0.6895. Instead of selling 0.6895 shares, we have to buy 0.6895 shares. If this were a put rather than a call, we could follow the same strategy. The deltas would be negative, but we would do the same thing. And so this is actually the power of these binomial trees in that it tells us what to do. It allows the dealer to buy or sell the option at the fair value and gives them a strategy for locking in that fair value, regardless of what the stock does.